Welcome to a narrated video showing United Kingdom aircraft that I personally photographed or videoed, mostly at the National Museum of the United States Air Force in Dayton, Ohio, that I will note as the Air Force Museum, the National Naval Aviation Museum in Pensacola, Florida, that I will note as the Naval Aviation Museum, the Smithsonian Udvar Hazy Center outside of Washington, D.C., that I will note as the Smithsonian, and at smaller museums and air shows. Enjoy the video. The Avro 504 briefly saw combat in 1914 and 15, but was quickly identified as obsolete and relegated to training duty. Its simple, sturdy construction and superior handling made it one of the most widely produced training aircraft of World War I. American student pilots that were sent to Great Britain learned on it before advancing to combat aircraft. After the war, the air service brought a few back to the United States and they remained in training service for several years. The Royal Canadian Air Force's Aircraft Maintenance and Development Unit used original parts to build this Avro 504K that is displayed at the Air Force Museum. The Sopwith Triplane is a British single-seat fighter aircraft designed and manufactured during the First World War. It has the distinction of being the first military triplane to see operational service. During April 1917, Manfred von Richthofen, better known as the Red Baron, commented that the triplane was the best Allied fighter at the time. This is a replica made from original drawings and is displayed at the MAPS Air Museum that is adjacent to the Akron Canton Airport. The British Sopwith F-1 Camel shot down 1,294 enemy aircraft more than any other Allied World War I fighter. The Camel was difficult to defeat in a dogfight due to its unmatched maneuverability. Tricky handling characteristics made the Camel a dangerous aircraft to fly, with more than 380 men dying when training to fly the aircraft, nearly as many who died while operating it in combat. Ironically, after the armistice, the U.S. Navy obtained six Campbells for experiments, operating planes aboard ships using wooden platforms built over the forward gun turrets of battleships. Although 5,490 Camels were produced, few remain in existence today. U.S. Air Force personnel built the Camel on exhibit at the Air Force Museum from original World War I factory drawings, this camel is on display at the National Naval Aviation Museum. The U.S. American Expeditionary Force bought 38 SE-5A fighter aircraft from Great Britain for its pilots in Europe. Noted for its strength, stability, and speed, the SE-5A rivaled the Sopwith Camel as the most successful British fighter of World War I. In 1922, the Eberhardt Steel Products Company received a contract to build 50 of the Army Air Service's SE-5A aircraft. The Army Air Service used these aircraft, redesignated the SE-5E for advanced training. This SE-5E is displayed at the Air Force Museum. 34 Avro 643 cadets served the Royal Australian Air Force in the late 1930s, while most cadets were used by flying clubs. This cadet is displayed at the Fantasy of Flight Museum located in Central Florida. The de Havilland DH-82 Tiger Moth trainer made its first flight on October 26, 1931. During World War II, most Royal Air Force pilots trained in Tiger Moths, including Americans who flew with the Eagle Squadrons before the United States entered the war. Tiger Moths performed a variety of roles in the United Kingdom in addition to that of primary trainer, including submarine patrol, air ambulance, and even prisoner evacuation. 
The beautifully restored Tiger Moth won numerous trophies at air shows before going on display at the Air Force Museum. The Hawker Hurricane was the first British monoplane fighter and the first British fighter to exceed 483 kilometers, 300 miles per hour in level flight. It's probably best known for its performance during the Battle of Britain. When the Battle of Britain commenced, the RAF Fighter Command had but 527 Hurricanes and 321 Spitfires to counter the enemy's 2,700 aircraft. Hurricanes absorbed the brunt of the German air attacks until a faster, more maneuverable Spitfire was available in quantity. From May to August 1941, the number 71 squadron comprised of American volunteer pilots led by RAF officers flew the Hawker Hurricane's MK-2A aircraft. The Hawker Hurricane on display at the Air Force Museum is a Canadian-built airframe painted to represent an aircraft of the 71st Squadron Royal Air Force. This Mark IIc, exhibited at the Smithsonian, was built at the Langley factory near what is now Heathrow Airport early in 1944. It served as a training aircraft during World War II in the Royal Air Force's 41 Operational Training Unit. During World War II, Westland Lysander crews flew highly classified clandestine missions from England over Axis territory. The aircraft operated comfortably from pastures, fields, and even clearings in the forest and was effective at inserting secret agents deep into enemy territory. This aircraft is painted in the colors of 138 Squadron RAF and was controlled by Special Operation Executive and flew clandestine missions supplying resistance forces and transporting agents to and from occupied Europe. It is on display at the Smithsonian Museum outside of Washington, D.C. The Supermarine Spitfire, along with the Hawker Hurricane, successfully defended England against the Luftwaffe in the Battle of Britain, and throughout the war it saw service in every major front. The shape of the wing, which became its most distinguishing characteristic, was elliptical, reducing drag and increasing speed. The combination of its speed and firepower made the Spitfire a deadly machine. Its eight machine guns concentrated a hail of bullets capable of shredding enemy planes at a point 300 yards in front of the craft. The Smithsonian Museum Spitfire is a Mark 7, a high-altitude version of which only 140 were produced. The Air Force Museum Spitfire is a Mark 5C TROP. Note the special filter for operations in hot, dusty environments such as North Africa. The Supermarine Spitfire Mark 11 was essentially a Mark 9 interceptor modified for photographic reconnaissance with cameras, a more powerful engine, and a larger oil tank in the nose. All guns and armor were removed and the fuel capacity was greatly increased. Speed was the unarmed Mark 11's defense. The U.S. Army Air Force's 14th Photographic Squadron of the 8th Air Force operated Spitfire Mark 11s from November 1943 to April 1945, flying hazardous long-range reconnaissance missions over mainland Europe. Placed on display at the Air Force Museum in 1993, this aircraft is painted as a 14th Photographic Squadron Mark 11 at Mount Farm Airfield in England. The Bristol Bowfighter first entered operational service with the Royal Air Force in July 1940 as a day fighter. Equipped with a very early Mark IV airborne intercept radar, the powerful and heavily armed night fighter version entered service as the Luftwaffe began its blitz night attacks against London. Bowfighter crews accounted for over half the Luftwaffe bombers shot down during the Blitz. 
After initial training in the P-70, a modified Douglas A-20 equipped with the U.S. version of the Mark IV radar, the first U.S. Army Air Force night fighter squadrons went to war in the more capable British bowfighter made available on reverse Lend-Lease. Bowfighters flew night cover for Allied forces in Italy and France until the closing days of the war. The Air Force Museum's bowfighter is marked as the one that shot down an HE-111 that was carrying German staff officers. The de Havilland DH-98 Mosquito was a versatile aircraft used extensively during World War II. It was constructed primarily of plywood with a balsa wood core, so it had excellent speed, altitude, and range. Mosquitoes flew in several U.S. Army Air Force units as a photographic and weather reconnaissance aircraft and as a night fighter. The British turned over more than 100 mosquitoes to the U.S. Army Air Force under reverse lend lease. This mosquito, displayed at the Air Force Museum, was restored as a Mark 16 and painted as a weather reconnaissance aircraft of the 653rd Bombardment Squadron based in England in 1944 and 45. The BAE Systems CT-155 Hawk is a British single-engine jet-powered advanced trainer aircraft. The Hawk entered RAF service in April 1976, providing advanced pilot and weapons training and, in beginning in 1983, some were equipped as short-range interceptor aircraft. This Hawk was photographed at the 2015 Cleveland Air Show. At the start of Operation Desert Storm, called Operation Ganby by the British, Royal Air Force Panavia Tornado GR-1 aircraft attacked Iraqi air bases at low level with hunting JP-233 anti-runway weapons and suppressed enemy air defenses. Afterward, GR-1 aircrews flew medium-level missions using 1,000-pound bombs. At the end of the conflict, they used Paveway 2 laser-guided bombs against other strategic targets. Flying more than 1,500 operational sorties, mostly at night, RAF GR-1 aircrews played an important role in forcing the Iraqis out of Kuwait and the RAF lost six GR-1s in combat. The aircraft on display at the Air Force Museum flew with the RAF-17 squadron from Dahrain, where it sported desert camouflage and the name Misbehaven. I hope you enjoyed this narrative video covering United Kingdom aircraft that are displayed in the United States.